No, I do want. I do want to make a, a, a toast and say that you know how much I love my son and how proud I am of him. And, but mostly, I'm proud of his character um, because uh, Bobby's the kind of guy that you know he shows his kindness uh, through acts. You know, he just doesn't talk and he tries to really make a difference if you give him a problem. And we all know Bobby's life is like, you know, if you call him, you get like one minute. Yeah. <laughs> you get more than that, you're lucky. He's up on me. He's up on me. Yeah. But uh, his act of kindness and caring and helping people are, I think, are the real medal of the young man. So, uh, so I salute you, son. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Woo! Uh, there's a sculpture. Bobby's real proud of his Italian heritage. I know you all know that. And uh, there's a, uh, I guess it's a sculpture line. Maybe you would know it in in Venice, called the uh, the uh, the hands that's over six bridges. And it's pretty it's pretty neat if you've never seen it. And it represents different things. It represents and stands for wisdom, hope, love, help, faith, and friendship. I think you can relate every one of them to Bobby. Yep. I was going to try to analyze that, but I thought, nah, we're not going to do that. It'll take too long. <laughs> so what I did do, son, is I wrote a little poem. Oh, oh geez, that, I know you might not think I'm, you know, this <laughs> this ardor like this, but uh, and he plays golf. And I do play golf. <laughs> um, and I was inspired by, uh, and only probably Uncle Tom and my brother Lonnie would remember this. From Connie Stevens, 1958, uh, 16 Reasons Why We Love You. Um, I couldn't come up with 16, so I don't get two cents. Yeah. <laughs> I came up with a couple. But, uh, so it goes something like this, son. Uh, the way you comb your hair, <laughs> oh, those funny clothes you wear. <laughs> those 30 second phone calls don't bother us at all. For the love you have of Jeannie, Tristan, Bobby, and Nick, leave no room for games and tricks. The lovely smile that you possess make those around you feel at ease and at rest. We are sure to never smirk at the dedication you have to family, friends, and work. For this exemplifies your life of this there is no doubt. The way you take care of your friends, your groups, the way you listen to their poop. <laughs> <laughs> the caring nature that you exhibited, the overbearing approach you prohibited. The patience you afforded us reflects your good nature and your trust. The love the family receive, the many people you believe. Now, even though you're turning 50, son, we all still think you're kind of nifty. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that's here today is my family, whether you're friends or, or my blood, you guys are all family to me and that's why you're here today. And I, you know, I kept it, this is intimate, there's still 30, 35 people, so, um, but I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come, come celebrate with us. I don't get out much, you know, so this is kind of a big deal for Jeanette and I and, and the family, so. Um, you know, thank you again. I hope you have a good dinner and just we're blessed to, to have such loving people in our lives. And, uh, you know, I definitely want to call out my, my aunt and uncle who are not here and my cousin Simone who's getting well and then um, the others. So. Happy birthday, Bob! Yeah. Love you! Cheers! Love you, Bob. April 13th, 1570, it was a rainy night in Stonegate, England, when the infamous Guy Fox was born. His mother, Edith Fox, had refused to attend the Mass at the Protestant Church the morning before. Edward, her husband, and Guy's father had been arguing with, the, with his pregnant wife all day until little Guy Fox entered the world and took his first breath. The fighting stopped when the proud father saw his newborn son. The joy of seeing his healthy little boy in the arms of his wife was enough to silence him. 1578, Edward Fox. The judicial official and devout Protestant was dead. Guy Fox was only eight years old, but Edith Fox was feeling relieved 
She no longer had to hide her identity as a Catholic. She no longer had to pretend to be Protestant and soon remarried a Catholic man. Edith Guy and the new husband moved to a village in North York Yorkshire and Guy became exposed to many devout Catholics. Guy al also attended St. Peter's School in New York while he continued to claim to be Protestant. His father would have been furious with this, but he wasn't around to see it. Some of Guy's classmates at St. Peter's happened to become his fellow conspirators later, years later, in the gunpowder plot. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Cassidy. Good evening. I think we all, as proud Catholics, agree that the crown has gone too far. The persecution of our people has gotten worse and worse over these past few years. We cannot tolerate another strike against our men, women, and children of Catholicism. I concur, Mr. Catesby. This is infuriating. Yeah. What do you propose we do? We can appeal to Spain. Do we really trust the Spanish monarchy to do our work for us? No, I don't think we shall. I propose we handle this ourselves. What do you mean, sir? Well, we'll set a trap beneath Parliament and fill the basement with gunpowder. The next meeting that is held by the king with his Parliament is in three months' time. By then, we will certainly have time to execute our plot. The king and every member of Parliament will be dead by the time we're through with them. <clears throat> What well, a brilliant plan, Mr. Catesby, but however, shall we get into the basement of the parliament? Mr. Trashman, you raise a good point. How do you plan to give us both unseen and unheard beneath parliament with a match and enough gunpowder to blow them all to bits, Mr. Catesby? I don't understand how can we possibly get enough gunpowder past the guards. I have a friend, a fellow Catholic, who may be just the man we need. His name is Guy Fox. Mm. As an adult, Guy Fox, now op an openly devout follower of Catholicism, began to work in hopes of raising enough money to travel abroad to work in the military service. When working wasn't enough to raise the money needed, Fox rented out his family's land on a 21-year lease. Then Fox began to work as a footman for a Catholic nobleman named Lord Montag. During this time, Guy Fox met Robert Cafe, the organizer of the gunpowder plot, through family connections, in 1593. Guy Fox was getting ready to leave for Flanders in order to join the Spanish military forces stationed there. Spain at the time was Western Europe's greatest Catholic power, and Edith Fox was exuberant when she heard her son would be enlisting in their army. When in the Spanish army, Guy Fox saw a lot of military action. He served under the command of Archduke Albert of Austria, who was Spain's ally. Under the Archduke's command, Fox was recognized by many of his superiors. These superiors included both Spanish and Austrian commanders, as well as English Catholic nobles, were, and were very impressed by Fox's military valor, as well as his virtue and intelligence. In 1603, Guy Fox was a very accomplished individual who was serving in a regiment commanded by the English nobleman, Sir William Stanley. Guy was now an ensign, was on his way to becoming a captain when Stanley and associates decided that Guy's talents were better suited for diplomacy. Once they had decided, Guy was sent to Spain to speak with the Spanish monarchs and convince them that now was the time to stage another invasion of England on behalf of the Catholics. Seems good. Put the gunpowder in place. Last one. There we go. Let's go. Oh my goodness. What, and, and what is this? Am I... Is this a warrant for my arrest? Let me see. Hmm. Am I to read this? Dear Lord Humphrey, I hope you know how much I love you and want you to know how much I want to protect you. I don't want to scare you, 
but I'm afraid to say that there might be a plot being made against you. Don't come to work today, whatever you do or say. Please don't come to work today. That is all that I can say to you for right now. Stay at home and stay safe. Sincerely, from your greatest lover. Hey, what are you doing with that lighter? I'm not doing anything. After him! <laughs> After Guy Fox was captured, the king requested an audience. What do you have to say for yourself? What were you doing in the Teller's traitorous Fox? I wish to blow the Scottish king and all of his Scottish lords back to Scotland. Well then, take him away. I will say this for you, Guy. You have Roman resolution. Fox was brought to the Tower of London to be imprisoned and interrogated. Tell me who the conspirators are. Never. Tell me! Okay, fine. Guy Fox gave up his conspirator after a lengthy interrogation. His imprisonment continued for three months awaiting his execution. A group of men have conspired against my crown and my parliament, committing high treason. These men were acting in the name of Catholicism. The Catholics must be punished for this heinous crime. You are indeed correct. Something must be done to punish all of the Catholics within our borders. Such heinous acts against our government cannot be tolerated. We must take away many of their rights so that Guy Fox and his fellow conspirators will never reach martyrdom. Without the right to vote or serve as officers in either the army or the navy, they will be unable to start an uprising. Their plot to start a coup will have no repercussions for us, only for those who stand against us. Shame! Shame! You Shame. Got For your transgressions against the king, you shall be hanged! No! Oh, Alright, here we go to celebrate Guy Fox Day! Woo! No. <laughs> there. there it is. Okay. Get that side of it. Is it all going to burn? Hopefully. It's burning. It's burning. Woo! All right. You got fire. All right, let's burn those dollies. Yay. Yay. It's Roman. Roman. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not. If we don't want to show them all. Burning right. them. Right, oh, oh, we got a clue. Oh. <laughs> Hang on a second, I get it. Okay. okay. And. Oh, that looks nice. All right. Nice. Cool. I think there you go. Yeah, these are for you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah.